headlines today, the Ethiopian government's blockade against Tigray is said to be threatening the people with extreme famine. Ethiopia also imposes restriction on federal and regional authorities' foreign relations dealings. And they also said ex-peacekeepers from Tigray have arrived in Sudan for asylum. The Ethiopian government's blockade against Tigray is said to be threatening the people with extreme famine. International Viewpoint reported that Abiy Ahmed's government has allowed the movement of humanitarian convoys in order to avoid international isolation and retaliatory measures, but in quantities far too limited in relation to needs. International Viewpoint said Addis Ababa is using the blockade as a weapon in the negotiations that are currently beginning. According to International Viewpoint, again, the war has seen tens of thousands of deaths, 3 million displaced, and 22 million people exposed to extreme food crisis, tragic proof that the leaders are currently unworthy of representing the people to lead the country. In a related development, the UN humanitarian chief Martin Griffiths said at least 16.7 million people in the Horn of Africa are waking hungry every day. Griffiths, on his conclusion of a two-day visit to Kenya on the 13th of May, said 18 million people have been affected across Ethiopia, Somalia, as well as Kenya. He called for an urgent action to save lives and the communities amidst the worst drought in the region in four decades. A catastrophe looms as drought devastates the Horn of Africa. A prolonged, crippling drought across the Horn of Africa is currently fueling a drastic increase in malnutrition rates for its children and their families. Speaking from Gode Hospital in Ethiopia's Somali region in late April, UNICEF Executive Director Catherine Russell stressed the severity of the growing emergency. Let's take a listen. The specter of famine is once again upon the subregion. It's clear that children, especially young children, are in the greatest danger. We are witnessing a crisis on the brink of a catastrophe, but immediate and collective action can avert the worst outcome. We saw that in 2017 when the humanitarian community came together to prevent famine, working alongside national governments, NGOs, and local communities with the generous support of international donors, potentially saving hundreds of thousands of lives. We need to do it again today. UNICEF and its partners urgently require $250 million to to save children's lives and futures, our response must be multi-sectoral, going beyond food security to include wash, nutrition, health, protection, and education services and support. This support needs to be coupled with investments in resilience building and climate adaptation programs to prepare communities to deal with a changing climate. The crisis here in the Horn of Africa is not making headlines, but that doesn't make the threats to children and families any less dire. We understand the pressures of different emergencies, including the Ukraine crisis, but we cannot turn our backs on the children in the Horn of Africa. It's not too late to act to prevent catastrophe, but we need the means to do it. And the window is closing as we speak. She also called on the international community to act now to prevent further famine. Ethiopia has imposed restriction on federal and regional authorities' foreign relations dealings. Minister of Foreign Affairs Demarama Konen told the Standing Committee of Foreign Relations and Peace Affairs at the National Parliament that a ban had been placed on federal and regional authorities not to establish relations or ink agreements without the knowledge and consent of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Without the knowledge of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, let alone sign agreements with foreign governments or institutions. The foreign minister said that the prime minister himself has recently given the directions to that effect. Some 40 former peacekeepers hailing from Ethiopia's war-wrecked Tigray region arrived Sunday in eastern Sudan after seeking asylum. According to an AFP correspondent, the ex-peacekeepers who arrived Sunday were taken to Umgargur refugee camp in eastern Sudan. 
Last month, more than 500 UN peacekeepers who were deployed in the disputed Awi region between Sudan and South Sudan asked Khartoum for asylum, citing fears for their safety if they were returned to home. On Sunday, an official with Sudan's Refugee Commission confirmed that hundreds of Ethiopian peacekeepers requested asylum after the end of their mission in Awi. An official who spoke on conditions of anonymity said, Arrivals of the asylum seekers will continue daily until they are all moved. Tigrayan peacekeepers interviewed by AFP also said they were worried about their safety with one senior officer saying that other returnees had been arrested or even killed in Ethiopia. Last year, around 120 Tigrayan ex-peacekeepers who were posted in Darfur region sought asylum in Sudan, according to the UN. Sudan has received tens of thousands of Ethiopian refugees since the outbreak of this Tigray conflict. Ethiopia's Gondar University has denied any reports that some of its experts, in fact, helped the Amhara militia destroy evidence of mass graves containing the bodies of Tigrayans. Witnesses, however, told the TBEN that they had seen experts advising members of the militia. Witnesses had described to the TBEN how in western Tigray, an area under the control of forces from the neighboring Amhara region, the bodies of ethnic Tigrayans and freshly dug mass graves had been in fact exhumed or destroyed. This preceded a possible visit by the UN investigators charged with investigating war crimes.